Hey guys, Greg Benz here with another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, I want to show you how you can remove chromatic aberration in Photoshop. That is, those nasty green and red and purple fringe areas you get where a hard object like a rock or a building meets a bright backlit sky. A pretty typical example of this would be the sun setting behind a building, like in this photograph here. And if we zoom into it, we'll see that we have some chromatic aberration. This was shot with my 24 millimeter tilt shift from Nikon. We can see this red area here. This is chromatic aberration. If we try and turn on the remove chromatic aberration option in Lightroom, it hasn't removed hardly any of it in this part of the image. And that's just because this is pretty nasty, tough area, and especially lens. If we look at some other parts of the image, we zoom up here, notice we're starting to see a little bit of a green color on the opposite side. So it's very common to see red on one edge and green on the other. If we look all the way to the top of this minaret here, we can see there's quite a bit of chromatic aberration. If we turn on the remove chromatic aberration here, it's cleaned it up nicely. So within the same image, you get some different results. You can get rid of some chromatic aberration in this image with that tool, but some of these other tougher areas down here where the sun is the brightest, it hasn't done a good enough job. And we're gonna to have to go over to Photoshop to fix it. We could try and play around with some of these manual options in Lightroom to remove a little bit more chromatic aberration, but I think we're just gonna need Photoshop. You can't get it all. When you can, this is definitely the best way to go. I leave this remove chromatic aberration on all the time with my raw images. I've never seen a downside, and oftentimes it's all you need, but when it doesn't work, you're gonna to have to go over to Photoshop to do a little heavier lifting. So let's turn this off and we'll see the full effect over in Photoshop. Let's just zoom in to take a look at the problem. So we have here, again, this red and green edge, and that's what chromatic aberration is. It's a color error. We want to fix that color, and one way we could do that is to steal the neighboring colors and use them to replace these colors. And a very easy way to do that is to take the image and blur it and use the color values in the blurred image because it will take the neighboring pixels and blur them over. So to do that, just right click on the layer and duplicate it or hit Command or Control J to duplicate it. We'll call this blur. And what we want to do is put it into color blend mode. We only want the color from the blur. Next, go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And what you're looking for is a small enough radius to get rid of the problem, but not any bigger. And notice this value already has done a tremendous job fixing things. At a higher value, we're really washing out color. It's too much. And at too low of a value, we haven't eliminated the problem. So right around that like kind of two, three pixel range, let go, let it catch up. Two's not quite enough. Get up around three. That looks pretty good. We've eliminated that color error or reduce it to such a level that it's effectively gone. So we'll click OK, and we see the before and after, and things look really good. If we zoom around the image, all the way from this edge that, you know, this was getting fixed before in Lightroom, OK, but now it's still being fixed with this method. And if we look down below, down at the bottom of this mineral, this is the area that was not getting fixed. And here we have this nasty chromatic aberration, and we fixed it. So it's done a tremendous job, and we could just stick with this result, but I think there's a few things you might wanna to consider to finish it. First, we've blurred the color throughout the image. It's probably a better strategy to just apply this where you need it in case there's any issues. The way you could do that is to put a black layer mask on it by alt-clicking on the new layer mask icon, and then just simply take a standard white paintbrush and paint the effect in at the edges. I would use a more aggressive flow because it's not overly critical, the result looks pretty clean, and we can paint that right in to remove chromatic aberration where you want it. The next thing, if you're looking closely here, you notice that we have some issues on both sides of this. We've blurred color, and what's happened is we've created a little bit of a halo in the sky and a little bit of yellow color in the interior. Look from before, where the sky is pretty clean, and the, the you know there's some chromatic aberration on the building, but it doesn't go too far in. And then after, there's certainly not the chromatic aberration, but there's still some color on the inside, and we have this white halo. So we can, we can remove both of those things with a couple of other adjustments. Let's get rid of this mask, 
and take a look at some options. We could have, say, for example, used our quick select tool and made a selection of the sky and use that to paint on our mask to control. So we, we would basically you know, avoid this layer with the, uh, the halo and just paint in where we're fixing the chromatic aberration by using a selection like this. That's one option, especially if your sky is cleanly separated from the background, which it usually will be when you have chromatic aberration. Another option would be to use luminosity masks. If you're using Lubenzia, you can switch over to the blend if mode, which will give us a dynamic mask that doesn't add to the file size. And we just have to make a selection that will select everything but the bright areas. Put in another term, that would be not light value. So we can switch to the not mode and try the different light options. If we look at something like lights too, that's done a pretty good job of removing the halo from this edge. If we turn that off for a second, here was the before and then here was after. So that blend if is doing a nice job of protecting us from that halo. We still have this interior color issue that we want to fix. And the, the problem is if we look at before, the chromatic aberration was creeping in. We can't use the original image and it's really just kind of an issue in the original image. So the blurred value doesn't work, the original doesn't work. What we want to do instead is just create new paint color. We've already blurred this to create paint color. We can paint right over this. There's no reason we can't just grab another paint color. So click I for the eyedropper, sample a color you want to use. So I'm gonna sample the interior of the building. And now that's my paint color. And I'm gonna brush it right under a blur layer in these interior areas. Now I need to turn down my flow because I don't wanna have obvious brush strokes, but we can just paint right over this to remove that and clean that edge up. So we're just recoloring this interior to get rid of that funky looking area where the color is sprawling in. So again, you can spend as much or as little time as you want on this. If this is an important image, you may want to do more of this. And be careful, notice that I sampled here and that color doesn't match here. So I want to resample here and then brush and we'll get a more natural looking color match. So make sure you resample your colors frequently. If the adjacent color has changed, then you need to resample and then just brush that color. And you know, if you want, you can use luminosity mask to here to, to get a little bit more precise. That's certainly an option. Um, may or may not be necessary. I would just use whatever is simplest, but you can use this to run around and clean up the image as much as you want. But let's just take a look at what we've done already without spending too much time. We've gone from this rough edge to this finished edge here and we've gone up in the top here and we've gone from this rough look to this finished image. So that's the basic idea. Just blur it, put it in a color blend mode, and then if you need to, use masks or blend if to try and hide any problem areas or even just paint to uh, repaint those colors. But that's how you can fix chromatic aberration in Photoshop. If you've enjoyed this, please leave your uh, thumbs up and comments below. And let me know if you have any requests for future tutorials, and I'll try and do my best to work those into rotation. And be sure to sign up at gregbensphotography.com newsletter to be updated on the latest tutorials.